In a recent live stream I did with Taylor Dustin, he told me that he doesn't think people in developer relations talk enough about the product that they work on. So let's talk about it. So about eight months ago, I joined a company called MakeSwift. Now MakeSwift is a small startup, 18 people that was already acquired by Big Commerce. I'll talk about Big Commerce and that side of the story later on, but let's talk about MakeSwift. So MakeSwift is a visual builder that integrates with Next.js, which we'll come back to. So as a visual builder, uh, it's pretty good. Like it's really, really good. Uh, you can select all your elements. You can change properties and things over here. You can create uh, reusable components visually that you can reuse across different pages. So if I uh, take the nav bar, for example, this is what we consider a global component. If I edit this and change one of the items inside of the nav bar. So if I select the nav bar and change features to things, for example, and then save this, notice it's gonna change this up top as well. So that's a global component. So you can build things like this, build sections like this, and then take that and actually create a component out of it and reuse across different pages, et cetera. And so as a visual editor, this works really well. So you have a list of pages, you have your elements that you can go through the element tree. You also have a design tab, and this is really, really neat where you can define colors for your brand as well as textiles. So if you notice, if I select the button, for example, you can see I'm referencing one of those colors that's over here in this list. So we can choose from like a color palette. And then also for our textiles on text elements, for example, we can choose a textile, which could be uh, headings, paragraph, dark, text link, et cetera. We have a little bug on if it's white and then showing up on a white background, but whatever. Uh, so I think this works really well. And I, visually, like you can create some really cool stuff, but the most amazing part of this and the thing that I am most excited about is the ability to integrate with Next.js. So in addition to components that you can define visually, where I don't, I don't think I actually showed you an example, but if I take this, I could create an actual component from this and just call this my box. So now I have that component referenceable inside of here and I can click and drag this on. And this is the exact same as this one. It's not in a container, so it's wider, et cetera. But you see the edit component, which means it is global. So in addition to that, you can define components in code that basically act the same type of way as a text box, for example. So if we look at text, there's all these different properties that you can define for your text and you can define different components inside of Next.js and do anything else that you want inside of Next.js, which is really, really cool. So I wanna show you a thing that I'm working on for a workshop at Render ATL. Actually, I'm doing this in uh, probably the day of this video gets launched, which is interesting. But this is a Next.js project that is integrating with Contentful. So if I show you this project, um, there's a lot of MakeSwift integration, or no, there's not a lot. There's some MakeSwift integration stuff that happens. So if we just look at the dynamic path uh, for all of our pages, this basically queries all the pages from MakeSwift and then just renders all those pages. And you can see that we have generate static params, so we can generate these pages statically, et cetera. And then we have components in here to be able to render those pages. There's a few other things I can, I can link you to the installation doc if you want to see what it takes to get in here. But basically it's kind of boilerplate stuff to get started. And then you can add whatever else you want. So one of the things that's interesting is in the slash blog route. So app, let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, so blog and then uh, just a page file. I'm defining this route specifically myself. Now this has been updated because this is what the workshop example will be like. The actual version of this is going to be in slash basic, which is what you're just looking at. So this is regular Next.js stuff. None of this is even makes with specific yet, although we'll show you how you can add something cool to it. So we have generate static params. We have query blog posts, which is coming from Contentful. We have format blog because I need this to be in a separate for a slightly different format. And then we're using this blog post component. This actually comes from Vibes, which I talked about a little bit in the last video but it is a set of components that are already integrated with Next.js for streaming and loading patterns and all, all kinds of things. So if we scroll down to sections, there's a blog post content section, and you can see that this looks pretty similar to what I have in mind. Did you just hear that thunder? If not, then just believe me, it's like thundering pretty loud. Anyway, as I'm editing this, I can tell you couldn't hear that. Just know what happened. So I've got this stuff displaying here, and this is from the component uh, that comes from Vibes. You just copy and paste this into your project. And then inside of here, we just pass the right information to it, and we get this result. So this is not even a page that I've defined in MakeSwift uh, first. I defined this in code first and then just added the page, uh, which basically just lets me define the path that I'm loading. 
So one thing that does become really interesting though is the ability to add customization to this visually. And this is where the power of Make Swift comes in. So I'm gonna add a new page and this is going to be a blank page. And again, this is really referenced from uh, the code, but I'm just giving a reference to it inside of Make Swift so that we can load it. So this is going to be the uh, purify plants with slot. Slot is one of the most powerful things you can have access to in Make Swift. And then we will do slash blog, and then we'll call this uh, with slot, and then purify plant. I think that's right. And then we'll just make sure to refresh this so that it loads that latest page. And maybe this is plant. All right, cool. So that's showing up. So the cool thing is this version is a little different where we have this gray area down here showing up. And what that is, is the ability to add whatever I want inside of this. So I have this page that's fully defined in code, integrated just like anything else next JS, but then I can define a little editable section and I can say, this is going to be an H2, give this, uh, I don't have textiles in this one set up, so let's just give it style. So 42 and bold, and we'll say uh, my main, CTA. All right, cool. And then typically actually what we do for sections is just put them inside of a box. We can put the box and then put the text. We can use the box as a container for padding and things like that. And then we could drag in another component that is um, defined inside of my code that becomes available in here, which is the signup form. So I can move the text over to the left. If we have this go a hundred percent. So now this is aligned here. I could also take the box container itself and just make this a width of, let's say 800 pixels. All right, so now that is kind of centered and looks a little bit better. So I have the ability to add whatever I want inside of this slot. And that comes from defining, now if we look at the width slot page TSX, we're doing a lot of the similar stuff. We're generating static params for each one of the blog posts. We get the slug, we look for the slug, and then we do this thing uh, with a component snapshot, and then we render that inside of Make Swift component element down here. Now, this may be a lot for someone that's brand new to this. That's okay. You can kind of move past this, but a lot of the same stuff is happening where we're querying the blog, et cetera. And then to have that blog post be accessible inside of the component that we're rendering, we need to use a provider. So we, we share that through this provider. And then what happens is we have a file where we define this component as it's registered in MakeSwift. And what we define is a children prop using slot. Slot is just the control in MakeSwift for that empty area that you can drag whatever you want in. And then we have the associated component and all this does, I have some TypeScript stuff in here, but all this does is do the same thing we did before and then also render that children prop. So this is just a React component. All of this is pure React. This is the exact same thing as we had before, but now we're just rendering that children prop that gets passed to it. So that enables us to now have this editable slot section, whatever you want to call it, we can put whatever content we want in it. So you can think about this from like, if I'm querying content from Contentful, for example, um, I could define how and where I want the different content to render. And then I could define other parts in code of what I want to show before, after, et cetera. So I could also have like a recommended post and I could add a drop down here for like how many of those posts do I wanna show. You could do anything you want in the code. And that I think is the biggest thing for me with Make Swift. I have, I have concerns over visual builders, low code, no code tools. I've used them in the past as well. The ability to tap in directly to Next.js here is the most important part. And that is what enables someone like me to make this make sense. Now, the biggest use case for this is like you have a development team and, and a marketing or a content team or something like that. And you have this separation of developer teams can create these components and then enable the uh, users inside of the visual builder here to go and build. Like if they need to build new pages, they can just do that. And they can drag from pre-selected components that already have design styles and the right properties and things and how you define these properties for these components is that's just thinking about the user experience of what it's like inside of the visual builder. So anyway, I, uh, I, I, let me know if you want to hear more about this. If you want to see some examples, I've got some content that is on, um, coming on the make Swift channel. There's also blog posts and things that I've, uh, or guides that I've created on the, on the make Swift, uh, docs as well, but it's a pretty interesting topic. So if you have anything relevant to this that you're interested in, let me know. I'd be happy to talk about it and we'll be talking about this topic specifically 
the day that this is released, which is tomorrow at Render ATL. So anyway, let me know what you think. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.